Wasabi wallet, unfairly private. Sparrow Wallet is a versatile desktop Bitcoin wallet with a lot of great features. In fact, they've just added the feature to utilize Whirlpool to help preserve your privacy. Today, we're going to take a look at how to create a new wallet within Sparrow, fund it with coins, and utilize Whirlpool to break the links between you and your coins. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions, and this is your daily session. Bitcoin. Before we dive in, of course, shout out to sponsors of the show, ShakePay.com. If you are stacking sats in Canada and you're not using ShakePay, you need to get on top of this because this is the easiest way to buy Bitcoin in Canada. There's a dedicated app for both iOS and Android. It's super easy to use and fund, easy to send e-transfers and get money in your account. There are no deposit fees and no withdrawal fees, which is amazing because you don't see that on most exchanges. Uh, the spread is super slim, so you get away with basically some of the lowest fees in the country. On top of that, they have killer ways to earn Bitcoin through their referral program. If you refer somebody, you both get 10 bucks. And once you've referred somebody, you can shake your phone once a day and earn free sats. You heard that right, free sats just for shaking your phone. This is how I buy Bitcoin. And this is what you should probably check out if you're not already there. Links are in the show notes down below. Now, of course, Ledin.io, you can use your Bitcoin for a variety of different services here. If you're in a pinch and you need to get your hands on dollars, but you don't want to sell your Bitcoin, because why would you ever want to do that? Uh, you can utilize their loan products. You deposit Bitcoin in here. You get dollars to your bank account within 24 hours. And when you pay back those dollars, you get back your collateral, aka the same number of sats. Uh, that's what I love to do. Um, it prevents me from getting those taxable events uh, if I just need some quick dollars. So uh, yeah, I love these guys. They also have their savings accounts and they have their B2X offering. If you're feeling mega bullish, check them out. Links are in the show notes. Now I do live on Bitcoin. BitRefill helps me a lot with this. You can get any gift card your little heart desires here in a ton of different countries and you can pay for them with Bitcoin using either on-chain or as I do most of the time, Lightning Network for cheap instant transactions. They have a ton of different stuff here. You also earn sats back as you shop and they've got a killer referral program as well. Check them out, links are down below. Now Keystone, you guys know this, uh, one of my favorite and most used hardware wallets and I love it because it's air gapped, meaning you never plug the thing into anything internet connected, it's all done offline via QR code. Keeping the keys to your money safe and away from shady internet connections. They have Bitcoin only firmware, which I highly recommend you upgrade to. They have secure element, uh, it works with all my favorite wallets, Blue Wallet, Sparrow Wallet, which we're gonna be touching on today, Spectre, Wasabi, all that great stuff, works with all of them. Also, pretty badass in a multi-sig setup. So check them out. Links are below. And finally, if you're backing up any important Bitcoin wallet, including the one we're going to be talking about today, you're going to want to get it in solid steel because just jot it on a piece of paper is not the best. And it opens you up to things like water damage or fire damage. I have heard some horror stories. Please give yourself the peace of mind of knowing that uh, a simple little mistake isn't going to erase the backup to your money. Uh, Bill Foddle over at Pri privacypros.io can help you out there. With that, let's dive in and get ourselves started with Sparrow. Let's just get a couple terms and concepts out of the way. Uh, so first off, Bitcoin, a Bitcoin wallet, it does not just hold a singular balance. When you receive transactions into your wallet, they are still separate, much like when you hold a physical wallet and you receive multiple bills with various denominations into your wallet. Those remain separate as you receive them. These are known as UTXOs in Bitcoin. So if I receive 0.1 Bitcoin and 0.2 Bitcoin, I don't just have a singular balance of 0.3 Bitcoin, I have a UTXO for 0.2 and a UTXO for 0.1. When I go to spend those out, I actually, in some cases, combine them. So if I want to spend 
0.25 Bitcoin, I'm going to need to combine the 0.2 with the 0.1. It's at that point kind of like smelting down pieces of gold and then creating two new ones, one for 0.25 and one for 0.05, which would be my change. In that process, if either of those UTXOs are in some way associated with me, like I bought some off of a custodial exchange that knows my identity, whereas the other one I got uh, from a transaction from an individual uh, privately, well, now both of those UTXOs are now associated with having been owned by myself. And through this process, people can begin to paint a picture of how much Bitcoin you own. This can be worrying not just in the instance of overreaching governments that may try to confiscate your wealth if you're living in a nation that does so, uh, but also from the outside looking in, individuals may target you if they know that you hold a large amount of Bitcoin, either physically or digitally. Okay, so just keep in mind that it is in your best interest to try and protect your privacy when using Bitcoin. The process of CoinJoin, or in this case, a Whirlpool implementation in Sparrow, takes your UTXOs, combines them with the UTXOs of many other people all at the same time, and spends them back out into your own wallet. What is unknown is the, um, the Bitcoin, who owns it at that point. Uh, so if somebody knows you have a certain amount of Bitcoin and you run it through CoinJoin, they know you still have the same amount of Bitcoin, but it protects your privacy moving forward in that they don't know which Bitcoin is yours at that point. So that's what we're accomplishing here with CoinJoin. It also segregates individual UTXOs or individual pieces of Bitcoin so that when you spend them, uh, it does not give away how much Bitcoin you also own previously to new people that you're transacting with. So with that said, let's take a look at Sparrow Wallet and its CoinJoin implementation. All right, so here we are with Sparrow Wallet. You can get this on sparrowwallet.com, download it directly there. Uh, I have previously done a video on Sparrow. So if you haven't checked that one out already and you haven't used Sparrow at all, you might wanna go back and take a look at it because there's a few things that I'll briefly touch on here, but they may seem a little glossed over just because I already have that resource for you. So uh, I'll link that in the show notes down below if you're not familiar with Sparrow. But right now, we're just gonna start from scratch and get ourselves set up with a new wallet that will be a, our designated mixing wallet, okay? So from this main screen here, We've started, we're gonna go up to file and we're gonna hit uh, not open wallet. We don't want that. We want, <laughs> sorry, misclick file. We're gonna hit new wallet. That's what we want. And we're gonna give this a name, okay? So I'm just gonna call it uh, tutorial mixes. So there's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. I know what this is. Okay, tutorial mixes, create wallet. Now we're gonna do our basic wallet setup, which we've done in previous videos, uh, but we're going to have it on single signature. We're gonna leave everything else be. We're gonna to go to new or imported software wallet. And you can choose your number of words here, uh, 12 or 24, it's, it's not really gonna make a big difference for you. Just for simplicity's sake for this video, I'm going to do uh, 12 and we're going to hit generate new. I'm not gonna add a passphrase for this. You could if you so choose. Again, uh, up to you, but I'm gonna hit generate new. And that looks all good. Now I'm gonna, just for the purposes of this video, <laughs> please don't do this. This is the worst thing to do. But again, I'm going for speed here. I'm taking a quick screenshot of this so I can, uh, I can confirm this momentarily. Much better to actually back it up well, okay? Uh, so please do not screenshot this. That is bad practice. I'm literally just doing it so we can do the confirming the backup right now, okay? So. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hit confirm backup, and it says, have you written them down? Yes, obviously you would, you would have, or you would have put them into a bill bottle, uh, as I recommended as well. I'm gonna hit re-enter words, and this is where we're gonna retype in uh, the seed phrase that we just got. Okay, great, so I've retyped in my seed phrase. I'm just gonna hit create key store, and then import key store. This now gives me all the information I need to have a wallet. I'm gonna hit apply, and I'm not gonna add a password here. 
Again, you could, different from a passphrase, which would uh, change the seed and create an entirely different wallet. This is just to get into the wallet itself. So I'm not gonna do that right now, uh, just for simplicity's sake again. And this creates a brand new wallet for me, which I can now utilize, and that's that. So we're all good. And this looks a lot like a regular Sparrow wallet that you would set up. That's because at the time, uh, right now, it is. All right. What we need to do is we need to add funds into this wallet before we can turn it into a mixing wallet with all of the Whirlpool functions. So we're going to do that now. We're going to go to receive. We've got an address right here that we can copy. And I do have another wallet pulled up that we're going to be sending from. So this is Green Wallet or uh, Blockstream Green. If you're unfamiliar, I also have a video on this one. Uh, but again, I'm gonna gloss over some of this stuff. If you wanna go back and watch that, you can. So I've copied my address. I'm just going to uh, send some funds. We're actually gonna send over, um, we're gonna send over two transactions here because I just want you guys to see what it looks like when you have multiple UTXOs or, or multiple uh, pieces of Bitcoin, for lack of a better term, sitting in your wallet. So I'm gonna paste in that address that I just copied. I should double check it to make sure it's the same. Looks good to me. Okay, now how much do I wanna send over? I would like to send over, I'm gonna say 600,000 sats, okay? And I'd like this to go through relatively quickly because I'm doing a video, so I'll set my fee higher. Review. Okay, that one is now sent. And we're actually gonna do one more. So first we'll go into transactions. And if you don't see, uh, if you don't see, oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, finding transactions, there we go, we already see it. Anyways, if you don't see your transaction right away and you, and you know it's there, you can hit refresh. All you do is you go to view and then down to refresh wallet, it'll check the mempool for any new incoming transactions. So we have that, now that that has popped up, we'll have a new address available in the receive screen and I can just hit copy there. I'll head back over to green wallet, I'll do one more send. I'll paste that in. And this one I'm gonna do for 500,000 sats. And we'll bump up that feed and get it through quickly. All right, that one is now sent off as well. We can close out a block stream green. Let's do that refresh. There we go. Okay, so we have two incoming transactions. Once those are confirmed, then we'll be able to start mixing. So we'll be back when they are done. Now that the transactions are confirmed, and we can see this uh, just from over here, this little pie, it says we have one confirmation. Um, this shows up to six confirmations, but regardless, you'll still be able to mix after a single confirmation. And the way that we do this is, we're going to go down to, on the left-hand side, UTXOs. Okay, and what you can do is you can select one or both UTXOs, and you can see the option to mix the selected or send the selected. We want to mix the selected. We're gonna do this with just uh, one of these UTXOs. Okay, so I'm gonna hit mix selected. And this bumps us into our introduction to Whirlpool, okay? And so it says here, uh, mixing in brackets coin join is provided in Sparrow through Samurai Whirlpool coordinator. Sparrow contains a Whirlpool client which communicates with the coordinator using blinded inputs. As such, the privacy of your UTXOs is unchanged when using this service. If you are using Tor to connect to your server or you have configured a Tor proxy, communication with the coordinator will be over Tor. The fees for using Whirlpool servers are deducted from the UTXOs that you mix. These fees include the Whirlpool fee and the minor fees required for the transactions. All fees are displayed for review before mixing begins. So we can hit next. By the way, you will only see this the first time that you utilize Whirlpool in Sparrow. And after that, it'll just be automatic. You don't have to go through these screens again. It says you're going to uh, see a new type of wallet. In fact, a few new wallets that will sit. 
okay? So you're gonna see premix, postmix, and bad bank, okay? And this basically separates it into coins that have yet to be mixed, uh, coins that have already been mixed and are still actually being mixed. They're, they're, they get remixed repeatedly, and we'll go into that momentarily. And bad bank is the change from your mixes that was not large enough to enter into a mix itself, okay? Then, uh, if you have any sort of a, a code um, to reduce costs of mixing, you can enter it here if you so choose, which I don't at the moment, and then I'll hit next. And then it says, choose which pool you'd like to use below. And you get a drop down here of any that may apply. So it depends on how much you are mixing. Now, at the time of recording this video, I believe there are four different pools you can enter into. 100,000 sats, 1 million sats, 5 million sats, and 50 million sats or half a coin, okay? So those are the ones that I'm aware of. You can see here, whenever you select your pool, and again, we can't see other ones because we don't have enough to enter in to the next largest pool, okay? Uh, but when you select your pool, it will say the pool fee to enter. So in this case, it's 5,000 sats to enter the 100,000 sat pool. Okay, uh, now I have five UTXOs that I will get out of this because it's I've selected my 600,000 sat UTXO, but because there are fees involved, I can only get five mixes out of that and the rest would go to my bad bank wallet, aka the, the change that would ruin my privacy if I combined it with other mixes, okay? So, uh, yeah, basically you're going to choose the pool that you're entering right here. We're going to hit preview. And here we get a good breakdown of exactly what's happening with that UTXO. So I can see that I'm going to be taking my 600,000 sats and part of this is going to go 5,000 sats to the Whirlpool fee for their coordinated fee. Then there's gonna be some change. There's gonna be the change that's gonna to go to my bad bank, stuff that was not large enough to be a 100,000 sat output. Then there's going to be the individual outputs, which will be 100,000 sats plus the minor fee, okay? And we can see the minor fee, what it's set at right now. It's set to high priority, um, which could be changed initially uh, depending on how you do that. But we've, we're already starting to go into the mixing process. You would change that uh, beforehand in your, in your send screen. Um, now, we can see, again, we can, we can look all through these. Uh, it actually has a full breakdown of all the UTXOs up here as well. You can click on them individually and kind of see what's happening with them. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. If everything looks good, then I can go ahead and I can hit broadcast premix transaction. So I'm gonna go and do that now. Now this popped up on my other screen, but I can see there's my broadcast. Okay, so that has now broadcasted. Let's take a look at what we're looking at and there we can we can see new mempool transactions we can see all of these different things that are happening and i'm getting notifications up in the corner of my screen so what is going on here what has just happened well as you can see in the top right here along the side of sparrow there are now four tabs and each one of these is a separate wallet okay a totally separate wallet they're unlinked okay this currently we are on the deposit screen or the deposit wallet and then there's all the typical screens all of the the other tabs that you would deal with within a regular sparrow wallet there's the transactions the send screen the receive the addresses the utxos and the settings you're going to have those for every single one of these wallets okay so we can see here on our transaction screen we had 600,000 incoming, 500,000 incoming, and then we had 600,000 outgoing. So there's still 500,000 sats that we had previously deposited that are available within this wallet. Now, from the send screen, again, it's pretty basic. Receive is pretty basic, same thing is still there. Addresses, you can see ones that we've interacted with already. And UTXOs, we can see there's just a single UTXO left 
in our deposit wallet because we sent out the 600,000. Okay, kind of get my drift here. So right now, again, we're just in the deposit wallet. Let's jump down to the premix wallet. And here we see a totally different transaction screen, send screen, address screen, UTXO screen, and settings. All of this is separate from the deposit wallet we were just looking at. We were switching between wallets, okay? So now I see an unconfirmed UTXO for 512,000 sats. Now you might be looking at that and going, wait, 512, you sent out, you sent out 600,000 sats. What's going on? Keep in mind, transaction fee, just the regular transaction fee to send that money and the coordinator fee, the 5,000 sats that goes to Samurai. And then on top of that, anything that would not amount to a perfect 100,000 sats actually got sent to Bad Bank. And here we see just shy of 80,000 sats sitting in bad bank. So this is change that would not have been a large enough UTXO to be mixed. Okay, so that is sitting there. The rest is in premix, waiting to be confirmed, and then we'll send out from here into mixes. Okay, so now we have a little bit of a waiting game again. We got to wait for a confirmation so that this, this 512,000 sats can be split up into five UTXOs and mixed, right? So just so you know, and there's a, sometimes a little bit of panic people, they look and they go, where'd all that money go? What's going on? I sent out, I don't understand. This is what you're looking at. You're looking at the 600,000 minus the pool fee and transaction fee, and then the change that went into bad bank, okay? so. We will be back once this confirms and when we start seeing some mixes. So it's been a couple of blocks since we last left off and now we can see a couple things are starting to happen. We see that the deposit into our premix that we made is now it has a couple uh, a couple confirmations, okay? Two confirmations on that initial 512,000 sats. And we know that um, there were fees involved with that and the rest is sitting in bad bank over here. And that also has two confirmations on it. However, we also see now a new, a new transaction from the premix wallet. And it's for 102,420 sats. Uh, so what's happening here? What is this? We can see that this transaction is actually, and it's unconfirmed right now, but this transaction is headed into postmix. And here's what's going on. Let's go back to premix here. That 102,000 sats is 100,000 sats that will be our mixed UTXO and then the transaction fee attached to it. Okay, so that means that when that confirms, we will have one UTXO sitting here in postmix that now has the links between us and those coins broken. And you'll continue to see new transactions split off from this 512,000 sats, and five of them, uh, that will result in five separate. 100,000 sat UTXOs that are mixed with the links between them and us broken, all right? So you can see actually the subtraction here, you can see the initial incoming transaction for 512, um, and then you see the withdrawal or the spend of just over 100,000, and then the remaining balance here of 409. The top is the most recent, okay? So that's what's now sitting in premix is 409,000 sats, okay? In postmix, we can see waiting to be confirmed 100,000 sats. And when we get another one, that number will go up. We'll see another 100,000 incoming with a balance of 200,000 until it gets all the way to 500,000 with the leftovers sitting in bad bank right here, okay? So let's reiterate what we're looking at. Let's go to deposit. Oh, I see a new one. Ooh, 
more coming in. All right, let's let's jump in. Let's see what's going on here. Let's jump back to premix. Oh, we see another outgoing for 102,000 sats. And in post-mix, we see another incoming for 100,000 sats. Fantastic. So we're starting to see more mixes coming through. All right. So it can take a minute to wrap your head around where coins are going and what's happening. But let's just reiterate what we're looking at. We have our deposit wallet. This is where you add funds that you would eventually like to mix. Okay. We have our premix wallet. These are funds where you've selected and said, start mixing these now. They will get deposited and then they will automatically start getting spent out as mixes into, oh, here comes another one. There we go. Into post mix. Okay. And this is where all the fully mixed coins will reside as separate UTXOs and your change from everything that was not large enough to be mixed will reside in bad bank. And to look at it another way, uh, let's go up to deposits. We can look at UTXOs. What's left in here? Well, we did two deposits, but we didn't mix one of them. So 500,000 sats are still sitting there. We had decided to mix the 600,000. If we switch to the pre-mix and go down to UTXOs, we can see that we've got uh unspent transaction outputs we've got two of them sitting there i believe all right um and we also have the post mix go to utxos we've got three of them here and here it actually designates how many mixes they've been through because as long as they're sitting in here and the option to stop mixing is not ticked they will be re-put through mixes until uh you you tell them to stop basically, or until you spend them out. And then finally, bad bank, same thing. If we go down to UTXOs, we've got a single UTXO for 79,000 sats, okay? So we will wait for at least a single mix for all of them. Oh, and I should say here, we're in pre-mix right now. Every once in a while, you will see this notification, mix failed. Typically, what happens here is if they start setting up a mix and somebody in that that mix disconnects it will cause a failure of that set mix okay and so they'll add another person and they'll retry so don't panic too much about that um, but i will give some tips and tricks of if you notice things failing more or if you see that things are not mixing after extended periods of time things that you can try but we'll come back when uh, the premix is effectively finished and we've got at least a single mix on everything. So here we are with everything now in the midst of, well, having already been mixed and in the midst of uh, getting a full six confirmations for everything. So right now we are sitting in the post mix and I can see there are now five UTXOs, all of which have been through a mix. If we jump back to the premix, we can see the transactions of those UTXOs going out. We can now see there is a zero balance sitting in premix, okay? So everything has gone out of this wallet either to post mix here or to bad bank here which is our change um, that we could utilize once this uh, gets big enough to actually mix itself okay um, so let's take a look in the post mix here we just got another confirmation so almost six confirmations for everything now i want to take a look now at oh, do we want this to sit here in post mix forever just in, in a hot wallet well i mean if if you're trying to hold for a long time which i hope you are then ideally no you don't want this constantly sitting in a hot wallet however you probably do want it to go through more than a single mix probably probably a few now let's talk a little bit about how these mixes work so effectively the first mix of each utxo is likely to be the quickest okay so um, and the reason is because you're paying the fee for that and um, you're also covering the fees and the transaction fees for everybody that's already been through a mix and joins into the new mix with you so what i mean here is you see all these five utxos once they've mixed a single time 
they can keep remixing again and again and again as many times as I like but that may take some time and I don't have to pay any further fees for that to happen, but I do have to wait for new people to join and start mixing new UTXOs or simply, I just need to wait for new UTXOs that have never been mixed by other people to request to create a coin join. And then my already mixed UTXOs may be eligible to join those. Okay. But the requirements are they need, I believe either two or three previously unmixed or or premix UTXOs from people in order to cover the fees for the remaining ones that go into this. And so they will sit. Sometimes it can take some time. You got to be patient. But ideally, you want to have a few mixes uh, to, to really separate you and your UTXOs. That said, you probably want these in cold storage eventually. Now, sure, you could go and you could send each individual UTXO to cold storage. The problem with that is one, you're going to be paying the fees for that, the transaction fees. And two, it, it, you can make mistakes in doing that in that if you send all of these together, then it kind of joins them and and denotes common ownership and ruins it ruins some of your anonymity that you established there. Okay, so it's not ideal to do that. However, there is a killer feature here on Sparrow. What you can do is you can actually set a threshold for how many mixes you want these guys to go through and then have them auto mix into cold storage. You heard that right. You can have a mix, execute, and then that UTXO go out to cold storage that you have established. So if I go down, so right now we are in post mix and we look at our UTXOs, you can see Okay, each one of these has a single mix. Okay, fair enough. What if, and and you know, like a, a five mixes would be pretty pretty solid because then it's uh, twenty five UTXOs because each one of these are are um, one out of five. That's kind of your anonymity set. So twenty five, no, that would be pretty good. Okay. Um, however, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to set a threshold of two. Okay. And what I'm doing here is first, we need to decide where these are going to be sent to. What wallet are they going to be sent to um, and where are they going to be held? Well, I've got a cold card. Um, normally I would air gap this, but it's plugged in right now just for the purposes of this tutorial. If you're unfamiliar with how to use uh, any hardware wallet with Sparrow, again, I did a full video on it. You can check that out. But for this video, all I'm going to show is just adding a wallet and mixing to it. Okay, so I've got my cold card. It's plugged in right now. And what I can do is I can go file, new wallet, and let's let's name this uh, tutorial cold card because that's exactly what it is. It's my cold card that I keep for tutorials. Okay, so I'm going to hit create wallet. Um, now I want this from normally it would be air gapped because I would use the SD card, but, uh, we're going to do connected hardware wallet cause it's currently connected and I'm going to scan for it. It pops up right now. That's plugged in. I'm going to hit import key store. Okay. And then I'm going to hit apply. No password for now. Perfect. Okay. So we now have our tutorial co cold card all set up. Um, again, addresses, everything is all right there. So what I can do now, and by the way, your wallets are still up here. My, my mixing wallet is up and then I can click the tab to go over to the cold card. So in order to utilize this, you have to have the designated hardware wallet that you want. Um, the account for that or the wallet for that needs to be open. Okay. For this to work. So what you're going to do is if you want to mix after a certain threshold directly into your cold storage, you can hit, first of all, I believe you have to select all the UTXOs. You, cl you click mix to, and then you say mix to wallet. Look at that tutorial cold card. How many minimum mixes do I want? I'm just going to say two, and then I'm going to hit restart whirlpool. And there we go. So what should happen now? is that when any of these UTXOs get to two mixes, it should mix directly into 
my cold card. And keep in mind, it needs to be open. And the reason for that is that this wallet here does not have the permissions to just pull my public keys and generate addresses. It needs to be actively open so Sparrow can say, okay, we need a receiving address to go over here so that this mix will go into the cold card. Okay, so that is what's happening. You can see these ones are being queued up for subsequent mixes, and then they should go to the cold card afterwards. So we'll come back when, when we see that happen at least once. Success, we do have a successful second mix on one of our UTXOs, which was then subsequently sent over to the cold card. Now, normally, if you had set this to a higher threshold of, oh, there's, <laughs> there's another confirmation on it. Uh, anyways, if you had set the threshold to higher than two, then it would show these numbers as subsequent mixes happen. However, since our threshold was sent to was set to just two mixes, we won't see these numbers change. We'll simply see UTXOs disappear and be sent out to our cold card. And we can navigate to that through the top here. Again, right now we're in our tutorial mixes wallet that we created and we're in the post mix uh, wallet of that, but we can click over to the cold card and we can see that there's a UTXO there that has been mixed a second time, although it won't show how many times it's been mixed here, uh, but it was sent immediately. Once it hit that threshold, it was sent directly to the cold card. So it now resides there. We know what our threshold was before. So we know it's gone through two mixes, um, AKA it's got a anonymity set of 10 uh one of it's one of 10 possible utxos um one of 10 possible owners uh, could have this so that's what i refer to when i say our anon set let's just walk through exactly what we did in this video one last time just to clarify Initially, when you start a new wallet in Sparrow, it will be a regular wallet and it will not have all of these little sub tabs that you can navigate between. These will not currently exist. What you will do is you will go to receive and you will send Bitcoin to your regular wallet. Once that is confirmed, you can then navigate down to UTXOs, select the amount or all of the UTXOs that you want and hit mix selected. What this will do is create a transaction and send out and create a new set of wallets. These will be the deposit wallet, which you had just used, and then it will add premix, postmix, and bad bank. As this initially gets set out, sent out rather, you will see a few things happen. You will see UTXOs pop up in your premix wallet, okay? You'll see incoming an incoming transaction uh, and you'll be able to navigate down to UTXOs and see them here, all right? And you will also see money come into your bad bank, which is any change that is not large enough to be part of a mix. Eventually, you will be able to mix this and I'll explain that in a second. But let's jump back to premix. You will have UTXOs here and you will have transactions that gradually go out in the size of the pool that you are in, whether it be 100,000, a million, 5 million, 50 million sats, whatever it may be, they will go out in those chunks gradually over time, not all at the same time. Eventually, this entire set of sats will be sent out into postmix. You will see transactions coming in again, one at a time into this wallet. And if you navigate down to UTXOs, you will see them here and they will have a number of mixes that they've been through. Anything in post mix will have at least one mix behind it, meaning that it's one of five possible owners when looking at the UTXO. It could be you or it could be four other possible people and somebody on the outside looking in has no idea. These will continue to be mixed indefinitely with new participants into Samurai Whirlpool uh, and into the Sparrow uh, Whirlpool implementation until you say otherwise. And the way that you can say otherwise is if you hit the stop mixing button down below, if you close down the wallet, or if you choose to mix 
to a separate wallet, which we did too. Okay. When we mix to a separate wallet, you need to designate what that wallet is and it needs to be open at the same time, which we had right here with the cold card. And if you have that selected, what you will see is whatever your number of mixes threshold, you will see those numbers tick up. And once it hits the number that you've desired, for example, in this instance, we did two, rather than seeing a two, it will immediately be sent out of this wallet into your hardware wallet as it hits that threshold. And we saw that happen with our cold card and we've got one UTXO sitting there fully mixed as per our specifications. Finally, let's take a look at your bad bank. One thing I wanted to quickly touch on is these are mixable, but over time you may just have to build up enough to hit that threshold. So right now we have a UTXO here that is, that is about 80,000 sats. That's not enough to be into that 100,000 sat uh, mixing pool. But if we do another mix, uh, with some new UTXOs, the change may add up to be enough to actually mix them together. So you would click and select all the UTXOs that are in here, and then you would click mix selected, and you'd be able to choose your pool size and mix them through, and they would be sent out from here into your premix and then your post mix, just like before, and any change would remain here in the bad bank wallet. Hopefully, I know that's a lot, but hopefully that will start you down that path. Let's talk a few tips and tricks just in case you run into trouble. Now, one of the main names of the game here is patience. As I said before, these things don't happen immediately. You have to take time, particularly if you're waiting on remixes. The initial mixes will be a little bit quicker. The remixes can take quite a bit of time because there needs to be new UTXOs, ones that have not previously been mixed, in every round of mixing. So that means two or three out of the five need to be new UTXOs brought in by yourself, potentially others, probably others, uh, and they need to be part of that mix. If there are not enough U new UTXOs entering Whirlpool, well, then you're going to have to wait and there's a queue of people waiting to be remixed. So again, it can take some time, be patient. However, if you're not seeing any action on your initial mixes, you can do a couple things. You could go to, we'll use post mix as an example because we don't have anything in premix. You can stop and restart mixing. If that fails to do anything, you can uh, shut down the entire client and reopen it again. And I did see some success with that when I felt like things had stalled up a little bit. You can also go up to uh, view and hit refresh wallet. That will refresh everything in case anything has kind of stalled up. Also, you might want to take a look down at the bottom right where it shows your connection. If this is not colored in, it means that you're not currently connected um, to the network and you may need to sort some things there. So just keep that in mind. And there's some details about that in my previous Sparrow video. I hope this is helpful. I hope this gets more people paying more attention to their Bitcoin privacy. And one final caveat that I want to add in here is... I've basically ruined all of my privacy for these UTXOs by showing this in a video. So as I said, don't show this information to people. I've just doxed all of these coins um, and they'll need to be pulled out and remixed again. So just keep that in mind as you're doing this mixing. Every UTXO that goes through here is you've broken the link between you and those coins and if you reveal that link or you start combining these together, it can uh, at least show common ownership. And uh, at worst, if one of those things that you bring together, one of those UTXOs that you bring together is linked to your specific person, well, then you kind of ruin the anonymity of all of it. So keep that in mind as you're mixing. Uh, but overall, uh, a nice easy way to mix direct into cold storage. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you're here on YouTube, please do hit like, subscribe, and share. All of those things really do help get this in front of more eyeballs. If you want to help the show in another way, you can hit up the mentioned sponsors down below. That was ShakePay, Leaden, BitRefill, Keystone, and Bill Foddle over at privacypros.io. And if you really liked what you saw, you can always drop me a Bitcoin tip at my strike.me page. That is strike.me slash BTC sessions. When you get there, you can type in any amount you like, hit the tip button, you will be greeted with a lightning QR code or if you tap to the right a regular Bitcoin address with that I am out have yourselves a wonderful day or evening and I'll see you guys next time for your daily session Hold all the Bitcoin.